Hey everybody, I hope your day is going well and that uh, you're in the presence of the Lord even this morning or the afternoon, whatever time that you may be watching these devotion videos. I pray that they've been a blessing to you. Uh, it's been a blessing for me to be able to share with you each morning. We're looking at Psalms and we've been going through many of the Psalms, but today we're going to jump back to 1 Samuel and use that as the launching point for uh, the Psalms that we'll be reading for our devotion over the next few days. So if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 22. We're going to read one verse from there. Then we're going to go to Psalm 142. From Psalm 142, we're going to jump back to Psalm 57 and then to Psalm 34. And as we go through the week, we'll look at each of these psalms and, and uh, see how they speak to us today. Because, you know, the, the wonderful thing about the Bible is that it speaks through the centuries. And it is something that as we uh, look at it, we can find hope, we can find strength, we can find assurance and know that God is trying to uh, speak to us through the centuries, through the pages of Scripture. So let's look, first of all, at 1 Samuel 22, verse 1. The Bible says, David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Psalm 142, verses 1 and 2. David writes, I cry out to the Lord with my voice. With my voice to the Lord, I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before him. I declare before him my trouble. Psalm 57, verse 7. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. And then finally, Psalm 34, verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. In 1 Samuel chapter 22, David is on the run from King Saul and he finds a cave to hide in. Now, interesting enough, the cave is called the Cave of Adullam. The word Adullam in the Hebrew means refuge. So in David's running from Saul, he found a cave of refuge. And David discovers during this time that it was easier to fight Goliath, the enemy of God's people, than it was to fight King Saul, the anointed of the Lord. He flees to a cave, and in that cave, David is able to find refuge. And I wonder if some of you out there may be feeling like that today. We're having to stay in our homes and, and not get out. We feel like our home may feel like a cave of, of a doolum, that it's not the place where you necessarily want to be, but it's where uh, circumstances in life have, have forced you into that place. You're, you're in the middle right now of a cave experience. Well, how you behave in a cave will affect your destiny. It will affect everything about your life and what you're going through. And though the cave may have been a dark place for David, it may have been damp, it may have been a little bit uncomfortable there, David found that even there, the presence of God was with him. So what did he discover? Today we discovered that the cave of Adullam was a place of honesty. Look again at Psalm 142 verses 1 and 2. David said, I cry out to the Lord with my voice. With my voice to the Lord, I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before him. I declare before him my trouble. And as you read through Psalm 142, you can hear the anguish that's in David's soul. In verse 1, we see that David was in trouble. In verse 4, we see that he felt like he was alone and that no one cared for him. And then in verse 7, we, we see in this psalm that to him the cave had become a prison. He felt like he was in little more than a prison while there. Um, I'm sure that David couldn't understand in a lot of ways how life had brought him to this point. Just a short time before, he had been enjoying life in the palace of King Saul. He was someone that was respected, but now we find that he's living in a cave instead of the palace. It had only been a short time uh, in David's life that people had sung his praises, and he had been the slayer of tens of thousands, and now David is a wanted fugitive, the number one wanted person on Saul's 
wanted list. Uh, he had become public enemy number one. And in this psalm, you don't see David saying, hey, I'm blessed and highly favored. You see him being honest and crying out to the Lord because of what he's going through. And David honestly pours out his complaint to the Lord. Now, I want you to notice David did not complain about others. He took up his problem with the Lord. In this psalm, we see David crying out to the Lord. Verse 1, he says, I cry out to the Lord with my voice. Verse 5, I cried out to you, O Lord. Verse 6, he says, attend to my cry. David's need was a very serious need, and he, he just couldn't sit around and pretend that nothing was wrong. And so he cried out to the Lord in the midst of what he was facing. And the cry of David, there was an honesty that really poured out how he felt to God. And I, I want you to know that God likes it when we're honest with Him. Don't forget, He knows everything already. So be honest with Him when you speak to Him. And the right kind of prayer and worship is one that is done in truth. Jesus says, they'll worship me in spirit and in truth. And so He likes truth. When you feel boxed in like you're in a cave, cry out to God. Jesus said in, in His parable in Luke 18, And shall God not avenge? his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with him. I love what the Apostle Paul writes in Romans 8, 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. We cry out because we're the elect. We cry out because we're his children and he's our father. David did not boast of his strength, he acknowledged his weakness. In Psalm 142, verse 6, he said, Attend to my cry, for I am brought, brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Once again, David is being absolutely honest with God. He knows his own strengths, and that he, in, in his strength, he can't overcome what he's facing. And the Apostle Paul knew this great truth. He, he tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. David's honesty led him to the realization that he wasn't alone, that God was his refuge and strength. In verse 5 of Psalm 142, David writes, I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. And David's feeling of aloneness, he declared that God would surround him with the righteous. Think about it. He's in this cave and he's saying, God, you're going to surround me with the righteous. And, and we begin to see that God does have a sense of humor when you consider who showed up to David's cave. The Bible says that the first group of people that showed up to his cave was his family. And we see in 1 Samuel 22 verse 1, it talks about his family coming to the cave. His parents, who would, didn't even bother to call for David when Samuel come to anoint a king, they showed up at the cave with him. His brothers, if you'll recall, his brothers, especially his oldest brother, was the one who chastised him when he went to uh, deliver them food when they were about to fight Goliath. And so here's David. Uh, his brothers that had ignored him all of his life as the long one, they're all coming to live in the cave with David. And then others began to show up at the cave as well. In 1 Samuel 22, verse 2, it says, And everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented gathered to him, so he became the captain over them, and there were about a hundred men with him. Look at the folks who showed up to be with David. First, his family showed up. And then we see the people who were in distress showed up. The word distress means those under pressure, under stress. And, and you know, when you're in a cave experience, probably the last people you want to be there are those that are in distress just like you are. But that's who came to be with David. It says those who were in debt. And that means to lend on interest, to have a number of creditors. Now David is surrounded with people that can't even pay their bills. And how is he going to feed these people that are showing up in the cave to be with him? It says those who were discontented showed up. And that means to be in bitterness of soul, to have been wronged or mistreated. Not only does David have stressed out people, 
people who are in debt surrounding him. But now another group shows up, and this group is the people that are discontented. And uh, discontented people can drain the life out of even the most most uh, at peace people. And David wanted the righteous to surround him, and then it would require him to take a ragtag group of people and make them righteous. You know, in this time where we, we feel like we're shut up, you may feel like you're in a place where you're surrounded by the discontented, the people that are in debt, the people that are that are distraught over everything that's going on. You have family there with you, and, and it seems like the four walls of your house are closing in on you. But we need to remember that's in those times when we're in those cases that we realize, hey, we're all in this together. We're all going through this together. And so we can be honest with God in our time of adversity. David found that his cave, the cave of Adullam, the cave of refuge, it became a place of honesty between him and God. So in the next few days and weeks when you, you may feel like things are closing in around you, just be honest with God and talk to him about it and he'll attend your cry. Pray the Lord's blessings over you today in Jesus' name. God bless.